Hello there, you alright? Ooh, I've just had a shower. This is take two, actually. I already recorded one once. And my computer crashed, so I went, right, I'm going to go wash my balls, and then I'll come back. <laughs> um, winter configuration's coming on nicely, isn't it? Hey, it's a little bit better. It's getting better. It's getting there. No shame. No shame. Look at that. My daughter drew those. Painted those, sorry. Because she's a fucking good girl. Anyway, uh, we talked about... Uh, male stereotypes and stoicism and things like that on the podcast and it brought a couple of things to mind that I want to sort of follow up in this little video this isn't stuff Hayden wouldn't let me say uh, if I was doing a Hayden wouldn't let me say it'd be him talking over me during the abortion thing <laughs> stuttering are you Graham? no you just interrupted me dickhead <laughs> not that I'm, I said that at the time so I'm, this isn't some like oh now he can't talk back and all that but anyway let's not worry about that um we talked about International Men's Day and we talked about the framing of it. You know, it's okay, guys. It's okay to show your feelings. It's okay. You don't have to be strong. All those sort of platitudes that were going around. And it, and it, it really... Some of it really concerned me. And just as, as a disclaimer for the, the far too ideologically bent out of shape ones amongst you... All human beings have, you know, traits that are considered masculine and feminine. We all have a mix of them. Of course, we do. You know, my, I'm, I'm the, 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 the primary carer for my daughter. My, my, my female partner goes out. And she's the primary breadwinner. She's an engineer as well. She's going, so <laughs> ball street. Yeah, she's better than most of them as well. She's fucking amazing. But that's, you know, so it's not like I've got some like weird cliched stereotype thing but it's, but it's the thing in terms of like uh when you're talking about masculine traits it, 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 we we keep framing them in a, in quite a worrying way you know and I, I think it's the reason why so many people are turning to extremism and i think it's part of the reason because you, you're taking away what's masculine you, you're, you're demonizing what's masculine you know strength you know you could say you, you could say hiding your feelings pushing your feelings down but that's also keeping calm under pressure you know is it it's a very very different way of framing what can be the exact same thing and boys have got certain natural tendencies towards this on average and girls have got natural tendencies towards community and interpersonal relationships and nurturing and all that other amazing stuff that they're wonderful at um on average obviously some have got bits and bobs and we should live in a world and we're increasingly getting there where you can be whatever you want to be of course you can but what we're moving away from is celebrating those things. And we've got this weird thing at the moment. And I think that feminism's to blame because it's so female centric. Um, it, it, it almost feels like the, the, there's this attitude of like, well, if we made men more like women, everything would be OK. And it's like, dude, Tumblr just got closed because of child porn. You know, and that's that's the that's the women's social network, and it's uh, we got a female prime minister, a female fucking home office. They're all fucking it up. They're just they're just as shit as men. <laughs> so we let's just uh, you know, but 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 we're all just as shit as each other. But when we when we work together, we can do amazing things, and that's the point. I think we're kind of forgetting that a little bit, and we're we're forgetting that thing of like you know, um, you can talk about men hiding the feelings away but when a fireman runs into a Berlin building you want him to keep his shit together you want him to keep his feelings down you you, you want him to do all those things that we're 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 now repackaging as toxic masculinity and all that and it's and it isn't necessarily toxic some people are just assholes male or female you know and but then but but, but, the, but these these masculine traits anyway i've got a couple of things i want to talk about because these you can't it's hard to just deal in statements you know i'm not some great intellectual um and you know a tweet isn't enough you know i sent quite an angry tweet to a response about all this and um it's not enough you know the person that i replied to probably didn't have enough but anyway i want to talk about these man juice boxes so uh me and my girl we both started getting my daughter these juice boxes now with the little, little straws on and a little foil there um she likes them. I think she saw it on some cartoon. She's like, juice box, juice box. I'm like, yeah, all right, we'll get them. They don't cost that much. Like, it is a waste of money. It's decadence, but fuck it. Don't matter. You just you do these things, don't you? Um, and when, when my girl gets these, she puts them at the top of the fridge at the back there where they're nice and cold. And then when my daughter needs a drink, she gets up and she goes and fetches one. And she takes the straw off. She takes the straw out of the packet. She pokes a little sharp bit through that foil and she gives it to her. There you go, darling. And her daughter knows that she loves her and she knows that she's there for her and 
she 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 knows you know her mum's looking after her and she's nurturing her and she's uh, and she's learning about taking care of people she's learning about all these amazing things that you need to be a healthy happy human being um and and that's wonderful that she does all that but i i i can't stand it <laughs> i can't when i get juice boxes i put them in the door of the fridge because we got one of these it's a fridge then a freezer so if i put something in that door bit there she can just about open it she can just about reach over ah, and get it like that and then she comes in here and she pulls that off and it's always an ass she can't get it takes her ages to get the straw out of there um but once she gets the straw out she's pretty good she can pop it through there and she sits there and i sit there and i watch her do this and i encourage her if needs be i watch her and um and i think that's fucking great She's learning independence. She's learning responsibility. She's learning to take her initiative. She's learning to not not rely on other people, you know, to survive. That's what I want. I want to I want to grow up into a woman who goes out and survives in the world, and um, and that's totally valid. I think that's a good thing. I don't I don't I don't like what so so does, um, but that doesn't make what so does any less valid or any import less important. That both of our approaches are completely valid and completely respectful and i would argue that she needs both of those influences it's the yin yang thing isn't it you know she you like she she needs to learn to stand for herself she needs to be independent she needs to learn how to do this shit and no one's going to do it for her so she doesn't grow up to be some woke triggered freak but she also needs a mum to teach her about nurturing and caring so she doesn't grow up to be some fucking Nazi, you know what I mean? Some, some one of these insane libertarians that are just like, no, <laughs> get off my lawn. You know, like if she had too much of my thing, I'm, I, th I think my thing's good. But I think in order for her to learn what's good about my approach, she needs to get the mum's approach as well so she can see. She can see the two things coming together. And she can see that i'm doing it with love and care that i am that i've thought about it i'm not just uncaring <laughs> i'm like don't do it she needs to learn <laughs> and i think this juice box thing has been going through my head since we finished the podcast because i think it's a it's a really good example of that like you know that what you might describe as masculine and feminine traits and i'm worried at the moment that we're, we're demonizing the masculine so much that it's not there you know um, if both of us ran to the fridge and got a reduced box every time, she's not learning the other half. If both of us just went sort yourself out, that could just be neglect. You know, she's not going to feel love. She's not going to understand all these amazing things that the more feminine side of things can teach you. That are fucking amazing. But she needs all that so much. If you just have one or the other, we're fucked. And that's kind of what's been in my head in terms of all this framing of, you know, International Men's Day. I I, I barely saw any sort of like, hey men, thanks. You know, <laughs> thanks for that. Thanks for men being men. You know, which which I think a lot of people, a lot of people do appreciate, do feel and do understand what I'm talking about. I really genuinely think they do. But it's almost like culturally inappropriate to to say it you know men are trash or oh, the patriarchy all that other bullshit that's what's appropriate isn't it but i don't think a lot of people really feel like that deep down even the ones that espouse all this bullshit they're still in they're still with the partner and the partner looks after him and everything they go out they could because they, they just have this fucked up view of the world you know it's like oh well it's not like that for me but it is for everyone else and all that and it's and it's just a thingy um but then i've got another story on the back of that as well because i don't want to i want to tell story and i hope you can sort of just take what you want out of it you might take something else and please let me know if you do take something else if you think i'm neglectful let me know but yeah when we went to do the shots for my daughter as well like um there was two distinct roles there i i got her on my knee i got her comfortable i was teasing her and making her distracting her and all that and then the doctor stabbed her with a piece of metal and she screamed like i've never heard her scream before and she cried like i've never heard her before and I held her while she did it. I, I I pushed my feelings down, you know, in such a way that we keep telling men isn't good. But it felt good doing it. It felt right doing it. Yeah, I wasn't happy. I hated it. I want to punch the doctor. 
I wanted to destroy her. She was hurting my baby girl, man. I wanted to destroy her. But in that moment of pushing my feelings down, it was the right thing to do. And I think that's an important thing to consider and it's an important lesson to keep within yourself. But then at the same time, as soon as it was over, I mean, she actually went on Soul's boob and it was just the, the, the actual, the, the very definition of nurturing parent. The, you know, she was holding her and she was just holding her mum and she was shaking and she went on and she was she was feeding. She calmed down slowly and she got nothing but absolute love and you're safe now, you're safe now. And she wouldn't look at me for a day. She wouldn't even look at me. I betrayed her. But it was the thing that needed to happen. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's the, and, 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 and we both fulfilled those two roles and it, that was a good thing. And I'm worried that we're, we're going to lose, you know, as a species, and I'm, I'm talking in the West, uh, I'm worried that we're going to lose that dynamic because we're, so much of it is with this talk of patriarchy and all this stuff, the misogyny and misandry that's floating around and this sort of like, um, we need each other. You know, and we, 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 we did, did like that, that made me and Sol closer, you know, we, that made us into a, that was one of the building blocks that turned us into a family. It's not just the fact that we shagged and she pushed out a baby. It was that moment, you know, it was, the, it was recognizing things like this. Um, the third and final story is very much, you know, obviously like, um, so like a year ago, just over a year ago, my little girl got some a cup of tea on her hand, and I, it was just completely red, completely. We thought she was gonna be all hooked and horrible. It was really, really bad. Um, some of it splashed on her chest as well. We went to hospital. I didn't know this at the time, but I do know it now. If you get a burn like that, and it was quite a lot of skin was she she was she scratched it and her skin just came right off. It was really bad, but um. I didn't know this at the time, but when you go to hospital, they, they, they take you to the bathroom. They call it the bathroom and they, they scrub you because you've got so many germs and infectious diseases on your skin all the time. When all that skin comes off, it's just doof. Not just what's on your skin, but you know, anything. Cause, cause I got straight in the, like I, I got all my clothes off. I got straight in the bath with her and we, I was just, I wasn't running the tap on her. I was just putting the cold water on her, you know? Um, and because I kept my shit together, don't get me wrong, I was freaking the fuck out. But I pushed my feelings down. There's stuff that we keep putting negative things on, you know? Now, when we went to do the bath, one of us had to go in there with her, obviously. We both could have gone in there, obviously. And there was no question that it was going to be me. There was, it was, it was just, we just knew. You know, you can, you can talk about men and women and roles and all that other stuff and all, and, and, you know, but, but in that, in that instant when it, when it really, really fucking came down to it, who was going to hold her down while she screamed and they scrubbed her and she begged for mercy. That was me. You know, there was, there was no question. And, um, it was one of them where. I, I stopped because I took it. Soph didn't have to go through that. She doesn't have that memory. Do you know what I mean? And like that, that to me is like one of my proudest moments as a man, not as a person, not as a human, but as a man, you know, like, um, I'll never get rid of that memory. I'll never, <laughs> um, daddy, I'm clean and all that shit. She's like literally begging for mercy. Um, but I held her down, I held her fucking down, and I, t and I took it, you know, and, and it's like, she had to go back a second time, and, and we could have gone, we could have gone the equality route, we could have gone, this this is the, the thing, you know, equity, not equality, equity, 50-50, if I'd have gone hardcore into this, because equity is bullshit, the more I read about it, the more I'm just like, no, um, if we'd have gone hardcore into that, it would have been like, well, I went, it's your turn now, step up. It's like, no, 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 I, I went the second time. Even knowing what was going to happen, you know, the, the sc scrubbing of burns and all that. And um, I 
And again, the theme. I had to push my feelings down. I had to be strong. I had to be strong in ways <laughs> I didn't even think I was capable of. You know what I mean? And uh, I think on things like International Men's Day, it's probably worth... Um, and the same with Father's Day. Rather than saying, let's cancel Father's Day, what are, it's probably worth thinking about what it is that men do do well and what they are good at and what, they, what they're capable of if they're just given it, you know? Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I should probably go. She's alright now, by the way. She healed up like no problem. <laughs> She's a tough little fucker. She's great. She's the best girl in the whole world. <laughs> I'll see you in a bit.